a better job and serving our people. So we are honored today that the treasurer, the city treasurer, Kurt Summers, has chosen to participate and invest in this bank as well as in this community. Right. There's a great need. There's a great need. Last night I watched the news that were 10 deaths in Chicago before 9 o'clock last night. 10 murders in Chicago. There's been over 500 murders overall within our city within this past year. Something's got to be done. Somebody's got to stand up. But we have to stand together and make a difference. We have to provide the things that's necessary to improve the quality of life in our community, in those homes, and in those families. In other words, we've got to provide training, jobs, and education. We've got to empower the families, the mothers, and the situation in those homes. And Kirk Summers has stepped up to the plate today and said that I want to stand with this bank, I want to stand with the community, and I want to invest and reinvest back to the community that we all should be doing as a whole. So we just honor, we all should be doing it. We've known Kirk for a long time. He's proven to be a great servant, somebody that, that's concerned about what transpires in our community. He didn't just get in the office and run away and hide. He said, I'm stepping up to the plate. I'm going to do what's necessary to bring about equality in our community and in our town. And we thank God for your So give another hand. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you to Alderman Dow and to, uh, to Bishop Porter for that wonderful introduction. Um, I want to thank all the elected officials that are here, Alderman Moore, Alderman Sawyer, Congressman Rush, uh, uh, and those present and past, former Alderman on the Third Ward, Dorothy Tillman, former State Representative Ken Duncan, uh, thank you all for being here uh, today. And I want to thank you for your work in fighting for this community each and every day. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for standing with us right here in the heart of Bronzeville. As Chicago City Treasurer, I'm responsible for investing the city's assets, including determining how much capital we place with commercial banks approved by the City Council. And today I'm proud to announce the City of Chicago is depositing $20 million. <laughs> city's money. It's not my money. It's your money. And that's why we're doing this. I need to be clear about that because this is the money that should be used and put to use in your communities. Unfortunately, today, Illinois Service Federal is the last remaining black-owned bank in the city of Chicago with almost a million African Americans in the city and in a state that has more banks than any other state in the union. We have one. This is not just a Chicago issue, though. It's a national problem. In this country, we've seen the number of black-owned banks plummet from over 50 in 2001 to less than half that today. Black-owned banks make up less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of the assets in the $16.5 trillion financial services sector. Less than one-tenth of 1%. One only 47% of black business owners receive the full amount of their loan requests versus 76% of their white counterparts. 59% of black business owners decline to even seek capital because they believe they'd never get approved anyway. In Chicago, minority neighborhoods are home to 15.1% of local businesses, but since the recession, they've only received 6.7% of CRA loans. Not all loans, CRA loans. That loss of value is over $335 million in minority communities in Chicago. And it's not just minority communities. Since the recession, loans to all small businesses are down 49% in the city of Chicago. These community banks are providing almost half of the small business loans and a third of the commercial real estate loans. So now more than ever, it's time to act. 
That's why my office is stepping up and making this $20 million deposit into Illinois Service Federal, putting your money back into your communities, and in doing so, boosting the capacity of ISF to catalyze developments in neighborhoods just like this one. With that in mind, I'd like to turn it over to Lisa Finch, who serves on the board of Illinois Service Federal, to discuss the impact of this deposit and what it will do, not just for Illinois Service Federal, but for the lives of Chicago. Thank you so much, Treasurer Summers. As the Treasurer mentioned, my name is Lisa Finch, and I'm a, I'm a board member of Illinois Service Federal. Let me underscore what this $20 million means, not just for Illinois Service Federal, but also for the communities that we serve. Over 13 years ago, I was presented with the opportunity to join the Illinois Service Federal Board, and I didn't think twice, because I believe deeply in the mission of service to communities that have historically lacked access to safe and secure banking options. What started as a pipe dream in 1934 has become an important institution in Chicago, serving about 10,000 customers and holding approximately $108 million in assets. This $20 million deposit from the City of Chicago will catalyze our ability to serve individuals and communities that too often are excluded from traditional financial institutions. It marks a significant milestone in supporting the rotation of capital across Chicago's neighborhoods, keeping money in underserved communities, and supporting Chicagoans who want to empower themselves and the people around them. Again, I want to say thank you to Treasurer Summers, and I will turn the program over to Alderman Sawyer. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank Treasurer Summers in this truly enormous task. People think that it's just him writing a check to the bank. And trust me, it's not that simple for us to make this type of deposit into this community. But what's important about this is, once we make this investment into ISF, ISF can then turn this into loans to some businesses that are right here today. That's right. Those people can then hire people. Yes. These people earn money. When they earn money, they can put their money into this bank and make additional deposits. And when it's time for them to buy houses, get mortgages and other things, they can get them from here. So this loan is, is truly important. This investment, rather, is truly important to the bank, to the community at large, and to the city of Chicago. I make it a point and, and a habit every day to spend money with someone black. That's my personal mantra. I try to do it every, every day. And now I want the city to start doing this. And this is a great move forward. Again, I want to thank Treasurer Summers and, and being a, a, a maverick in this and being yeah, out right. front. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, he's been working on this for some time. And, and, and I, I want to thank, you know, what a little bit we were able to play in this role. But this was truly Kurt's calling to make this investment. Excellent. And I'm hoping that it will continue on and steamroll so that we can, again, revitalize our communities. That's right, Thank you. Right. Now at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our Congressman, Congressman Bobby Rush. I want to thank you, Alderman Sonia. I live in this community. I love this community. I represent this community. I love Treasurer Kurt Summers. And if you love him also, yes. you ought to repeat after me, I love, I love Treasurer, Treasurer Kurt, 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 Kurt Summers. Summers. <laughs> now, I, I, I'm saying that because this wasn't easy. There are some who are sitting and frowning at this moment. They don't want this to happen. This is the first time that it has happened in the history of this city. Yes. 
They don't want this to happen because this is a solution to the problem. That's right. That's and they don't want solutions to our problems. That's right. And we thank Kirk Summers yes. for being a part of the solution right. rather than being a part of the problem. Yes, sir. I'm happy to be a part of this announcement by our treasurer, Kirk Summers. This $20 million investment of city funding is a powerful example on the meaningful way that government can support important institutions like ISL and create an economic environment in which they can not just survive, but thrive. Today's investment is a deposit in bonds bill, a community that I said that I love, and I say it again that I love, a community that I call home along with 120,000 other hardworking residents who want to purchase homes and share their community with viable and prosperous businesses. It's an environment in the economic development of this community and of this city. Community banks like Illinois Service Federal are the financial backbone of local small business owners. They lend to and invest in business that often can serve along with not large commercial banks. And let me just say this. It is deplorable. It is deplorable. It's a crime and it's a shame that in the city of Chicago, a big city where you have one of the largest black middle class community in the entire world, that we only have one bank. Yes one black owned bank. That black owned, one black owned bank has to be successful. But we have to multiply ownership of banks in our community. That creates, that creates the capital to invest in businesses. So if we want to invest in business and not bullets, then we have to create a vibrant black owned bank in the city of Chicago. So I wanted to come back um, and I want to first say thank you so much to my first boss in government, Congressman Bobby L. Rush. <laughs> uh, I was an intern. And I was a Congressional Black Caucus intern almost 20 years ago in his office, and uh, a few of us who were alums of his office, uh, as proud as he might be of us, we're so proud of him. Let's give Congressman Rush a round of applause. Before taking some questions, I want to offer some personal thoughts on why this deposit is important not only to me, but to folks in this city who, like me, live in and grew up in neighborhoods like this one. See, I grew up just a few blocks away from here, from Bronzeville. My mom, who's here, still lives three blocks away. I remember leaving this neighborhood on school trips when I was a kid and seeing firsthand the disparities in economic development between different neighborhoods in the city. And after each trip, I would come home now I'd ask my mom, why are they worthy of investment and we're not? Can you imagine a seven-year-old kid asking a parent, why are they worthy and why am I not worthy? Unfortunately, 30 years later, too many things have remained unchanged and too many children are asking the same question. As treasurer, I've tried to dedicate my work to the priorities of my office in the relentless pursuit addressing these inequities and disparities that have reached epic proportions in the city. What we're doing today is emblematic of the kinds of tangible and fiscally responsible steps that must be taken to address our city's most crit critical issue. This transaction is both consistent with my fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayers of Chicago and consistent with commitment I've made to the people of Chicago that I will do everything I can to responsibly invest your funds into your communities. Mm -hmm. 
That's why I'm excited to take this step in investing with this community bank, because community banks are vital to our shared economic future. First off, as the congressman said, and as, as uh, the two aldermen said, um, community banks are designed with the purpose of investing and reinvesting in their local community. No other bank is designed to do that but a community bank. Whether you're the city of Chicago, a local business, a neighborhood resident, when you invest in your own community bank, you support the reinvestment of capital within your own community, creating a positive cycle of economic development that leads to more jobs, more services, more amenities, and more prosperity for our, neighbor, our neighborhoods and for our children. <laughs> Second, community banks are, more, are often more capable of evaluating the risks of local borrowers than large remote financial institutions. I'm gonna say that again. Community banks, folks that are from here, based here, are more capable of evaluating risk in this community. See, when folks in this neighborhood ask banks like Illinois Service Federal for a loan, they get a fair assessment of their credit worthiness. That's based on real risk, not perceived risk. Community banks aren't just underwriting an application. These aren't random loan files. These are people, members of their community, neighbors, parishioners, shipites. That's <laughs> <laughs> congregation members. They represent businesses that these employees patronize, restaurants that they eat at. These are people, not just names on an application. I think it's particularly significant that this $20 million deposit is going to Illinois Service Federal, found in 1934 by 13 black Bronzeville residents yes. at a time when people of color were denied loans, not because of their credit scores, right. but because of the color of their skin. The unfortunate reality is that nearly a century later, this disparity remains as a persistent barrier to entrepreneurs, individuals, and communities of color. Because we know what drives the disinvestment in black and brown communities, don't we? The neighborhoods that they live in, it's not the real risk, it's the perceived risk. It's a perception that investing in minority neighborhoods like this one, and minority business owners like the ones that are here today, and the ones who came here today to open a deposit, yeah. let's give them a hand. People <laughs> came here today Business owners in this community and surrounding communities came here today to open up accounts, business accounts, new deposits, new assets into this bank. The problem is that the perception is wrong. That perception about these business owners, about these neighborhoods, is that this is a definitionally riskier proposition than investing in other neighborhoods in the city. This doesn't just play out in interest rates. It, play, it, it plays out in the loan amount, how much you appraise it for, how much collateral you need, whether or not you have to put up your home, personal guarantees, any various terms and conditions that serve to marginalize and disenfranchise our community. But we know better. We know that this is not only a poor financial choice, it's inaccurate and it's unjust. So we're here today to take action. We need to do more to invest in neighborhoods and communities that have been left out and increasingly left behind because this is the first step to addressing the most pressing issues in our city. The issues that range from gun violence to the deep segregation in our history. The answer and the first step is acknowledging the simple truth that Chicago's problems are economic in nature. Yeah. And they require real, tangible economic solutions. <laughs> These are solutions that must work for everyone, but especially those most in need. There was a, there was a figure that was thrown out earlier, over 500 murders. That's not a violence problem, people. It's an economic problem. Yeah. 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 It's not a problem. The 
we want the city of Chicago to reach its greatest potential, we cannot afford to leave entire segments of the That's population behind. Right. 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 As Chicagoans, if any of us, anywhere in the city, wishes to create a more prosperous future for ourselves or for our ch children, that we must make economic opportunity available to everyone. This takes action and not rhetoric. It takes leadership that pr 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 prioritizes the tangible over the expedient. As, as Alderman Sawyer said, this wasn't easy to get done. And as the bank will tell you, it certainly wasn't expedient. <laughs> but it's tangible. Yes. It's here to stay. And it will be invested and reinvested in this community. And that's what it takes. It takes a commitment to look beyond one's individual circumstance and to see the collective power of a community with limitless potential. As the saying goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The future of Chicago deserves better, and we need everyone to be partners in this work. Just down the street here, Jim Liddy Tillman runs a building, and out in front of it, there's a statue. The statue of the great mayor, the great man, and the idol of mine, Harold Washington. His, in his final inaugural address some 30 years ago, he saw the same opportunity and the same obligation and the same persistent problem that keeps Chicago from being great. What he said in his inaugural address was, the promise and the potential of Chicago requires no less of us. The spirit of Chicago compels us. Yes. And it's a spirit we must fight, fight, <laughs> fight to sustain. As long as I'm your treasurer, I will fight to change the paradigm of investment in this city. Oh, yeah. I will fight against the prevailing practice of investing in some areas at the exclusion of others. I will fight so that no child will ever need to ask the question of whether or not they're worthy. I will continue to fight and to invest in all of Chicago. Putting $20 million of the city's money, your money, into your community today and placing this capital with the last remaining black owned bank in the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois is a real tangible step. But it's just the first one. With this group, with this people, with this community, and every other community just like this in the city of Chicago, we can do this over and over again. Thank you.